Aquatic invasive species are non-native organisms that have been deliberately or accidentally introduced to the lake and caused measurable change in the native ecosystem. They include plants, fish, and invertebrates such as clams. Invasive species compete for resources with native species, impact recreational uses of the lake, can degrade boats and physical infrastructure, and disrupt the lake's balance. You may have learned about the mysis shrimp, its intentional introduction, and the dramatic negative impact it had on Lake Tahoe's food web. There are many other examples. Eurasian water milfoil and curly leaf pondweed are two aquatic invasive plants that first appeared in the Tahoe Keys but have now spread to other shallow bays and marinas around the lake, most likely transported by boats. Control methods such as mechanical harvesting are necessary but also produce tiny fragments that can become new plants. The use of an array of underwater ultraviolet lights has had some success in smaller marinas, but the size of the Tahoe Keys presents a challenge. The use of herbicides previously banned in Lake Tahoe is being tested. In Emerald Bay, scientists were able to remove the Eurasian water milfoil infestation over a two-year period by hand-pulling the plants and vacuuming the fragments. Two fish species, the bluegill and largemouth bass, were introduced into the lake sometime in the 1990s. These aggressive warm water species feed on native fish and are currently found in shallow parts of the lake along with goldfish. They may become more common as climate change continues to warm the lake. Asian clams provide one example of how conditions can rapidly deteriorate. Asian clams are invertebrates that were first observed in Lake Tahoe in the 1990s. They live in the sand in the shallow water where they filter large volumes of lake water to extract tiny algae to feed on. The clams then excrete algal nutrients with concentrations over 10 times what's normally found in the lake. This high nutrient environment has been stimulating the growth of stringy metaphyton wherever the clams are present. Aside from being a problem in the water, the metaphyton becomes a greater nuisance when it washes up on the beaches and starts to rot. There are many more potentially invasive species that have not entered Lake Tahoe thanks to a robust prevention program. A chief concern is the quagga mussel. The best defense is to prevent them from ever entering the lake. Starting in 2009, all motorized watercraft require inspection prior to launching into Lake Tahoe. The boat inspections intercept and decontaminate boats coming from outside the Lake Tahoe Basin that could inadvertently carry aquatic invasive species. Climate change and lake clarity loss are actually allowing invasive species to thrive at Lake Tahoe. As the lake continues to warm, it moves further from conditions best suited for native species and closer to those that favor harmful invasive species. Restoring lake clarity is critically important. Tahoe's uniquely clear water served as a natural purification system, allowing UV light to penetrate to great depths. Native species were adapted to thrive under these conditions, while non-natives could not survive. Do you think it's a coincidence that accidental species thrived only after the lake clarity declined?